morning IDM students. So a couple of you are now getting to the stage in your project where you're wanting to um, add your own animations now that you've kind of gotten to the end of the tutorials. So I'm going to do a quick little tutorial here of both how to get your sprites into Scratch from Piskel and then also how to get that animation cycle working properly. A lot of you are kind of running into the same problem and so I'm going to go through this step by step. First thing you want to do is make sure you are in Piskel. Um, you'll notice that I have a background layer that's brown on this one. So if you do have a background layer, what I've done is I just went here. This is my background layer. And I've clicked on the little A. And I've set the opacity to zero. That just means I've turned it to transparent. So you can see here in my preview, it's just my little character walking. There's no background around it. There's like there's a cutout essentially around it. This is really important because otherwise it'll import the background as well to scratch and it's not going to work the way you want it to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to export. Now this is a little different than how you would hand it in to me if it was just the individual animation for marking. What you actually want to do for this is you want to go to the zip um, zip tab. So originally you went with the GIF or the GIF tab. I want you to go to zip and you can prefix this. So I'm going to call it uh, walk underscore cycle underscore. And I'm going to click, don't click this one right here, split by layers. I'm just going to say download zip. Now what it's going to do is it's going to download a zip folder that you'll then have to unzip. Zip is basically a compression format. And it is going to have, for mine, because I have five um, five frames of animation. I will have five different PNG files. So we're going to click download zip. You can see it went into my downloads folder here. Basic egg walk one zip. I'm going to open that up. And here's the folder. So I have basic egg walk one. And then you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, five different uh, PNG files. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to go to Scratch. Now I've just, um, I've created this little Scratch. So what I've done here is I've created just a new untitled Scratch and I've left out all the other stuff you saw in your tutorial because I just want to focus on animation and um, importing a new sprite. So you can see here in sprite one or scratch that I have the basic um, basic sort of movement. I haven't even put in the uh, if touching uh, boundary or if touching level code here because it's not really necessary to understand how this works. But basically you have your if right key press, change x by five, left arrow, x by negative five, up y by five, and down y by negative five. All within a forever tag, all uh, stacked on top of each other. Now what I've seen a couple of you try and do is actually work the animation into this block and that's where you're running into trouble. What you actually have to do is you have to work your animation into an entirely separate block so they can run simultaneously. But first let's get our sprite into the game. So I'm going to go to costumes. You can see a costume one and costume two here. So we could animate little uh, scratch here, but we're going to upload our own. So I'm going to go here, choose a costume and go to upload costume. Click on it. Now, my uh, my computer is a little different than you. You're working on your Chromebooks, but you want to navigate to your downloads folder, find the unzipped um, walk cycle, and then you want to select all of those PNG files and open them. So you can see that we have all the PNG files here. Now the next important thing to do is you click on the, the sprite that was originally there and you can just delete those two costumes. And now you're left with your own, uh, your own costumes, but you'll notice the code is still there that you did before. So this is the nice thing. You don't have to redo any coding when you change the costume out to your own character. You can just do the coding with the original scratch sprite and then, um, and then switch out the costumes later. Now, this is really important and this is something, uh, that some of you might miss or it's going to cause you some difficulty. You will notice 
that I have a five frame walk cycle here. Important thing to notice, my character is pointing to the right. Your character must be pointing to the right. If it is not, um, you're going to run into all sorts of issues because Scratch naturally assumes that right is um, X positive. And so if you're pressing the right arrow, it'll move X positive. So it's just, it gets confusing. There's ways to work around it. But generally speaking, you want your character to be pointing to the right. It's easy enough to flip your character. You can go to convert to vector, select your character, and just go flip horizontal. But that's uh, it's not necessarily not totally necessary if you've already built it like this. Okay. The other thing that's important when we get to the stage is I only want you to have a right facing walk cycle. Some of you are trying to put in a right facing, a left facing, an up and a down. Um, we're going to try and simplify it for now because that actually requires a huge amount of different code. We're going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So I just want five frames of right facing walk cycle. And out of that, we'll get both our left and right walk cycles just by um, using a few simple commands. But if you're looking for like an up and down walk cycle as well, we're going to leave that for now because that requires a little bit of more complex nested coding. Okay. So let's get to actually making this guy work. One thing I will do before we do that is I'm just going to go to my backdrops and I'm going to fill with um, like a like a blue there, just so that you can see my character a little bit better. Okay, go to the sprite, go to code. So we here we have our basic uh, walk. So you can see my character is moving fairly smoothly around the screen, right? Um, always remember your Chromebook might cause some choppiness, but this is a pretty smooth movement of the character. Now we need to get it working properly as a walk cycle. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to just duplicate. So I'm going to right click on the top one here. I'm going to hit duplicate and I'm just going to drop it beside. Um, always make sure you don't have like extra copies because that can almost double your code. So we're going to have the same things happen, but we're going to change out some of the commands. So if right arrow pressed, then change X by five. I'm just going to delete that block. In fact, I'm actually going to delete the change X and Y blocks completely. So they're going to be totally removed. And then I'm going to, and then we're going to go to looks. So looks actually controls your costumes for your character and a couple of other things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to looks. And a couple of you have taken a look at you've like switched to specific costumes. And this is why that doesn't work. Uh, what you have to remember is that when you're running your code, it basically says it goes into this forever and then it checks these in order. Is this one true? Is this one true? Is this one true? And this one true? It moves through them logically. And if one of them is true, it'll execute the entire code inside it before moving on to the next thing. So that's a little bit why we uh, changed these is because it allows us to do two things simultaneously, which is the movement and the animation. But the key is you want to try and keep your code as simple as possible. So as opposed to saying switch to costume, this switch to costume that we're just going to drop next costume in each of these. So we're going to try that out. So now, okay, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. He's maybe moving a little fast. Uh, we can add a little control in there, like, you know, a weight point, uh, you know, zero two seconds or something. Uh, that's point zero two. And we're just gonna drop that there, drop that there, drop that there. Try that out. Yeah, well, that looks really good. That's a that kind of fits the the speed of the movement. It actually looks pretty smooth. And now we've got to create our right and left facing, which is also super easy. Um, which is just uh, in motion. And we're going to do uh, two different things here. We're going to 
uh, point and direction. So right here on the right, point direction 90 degrees. 90 degrees is always to the right. So when right arrow, point 90 degrees. And left arrow is obviously the opposite of that. So we want them to point negative 90. Now watch what happens because you're going to notice something that's a little bit wrong. This is all good. And then now he's upside down. So good there, upside down there, which you obviously don't want. So we have to do one other thing, which is go down here and we have to set our rotation style to a left, right, as opposed to a, a 360 degree. So we're going to just grab set rotation style, we'll stick, get right up there at the top. So don't rotate all around left, right. We want left, right. Try it out. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. What's nice here too is you'll notice that it'll just keep pointing in the direction of whatever your last direction you're going in as you do up and down, which makes sense, right? It kind of seems appropriate. Okay, so now we've got a character and he can move around no problem. So that's how you do the importation of your own um, sprite costume. And that's how you get them to move. So remember, it is a separate block where you're forever checking for the same key inputs. But now instead of doing the um, X and Y change, you're basically just saying, go to the next costume and point in this direction. So that should take care of most of your movement. I know some of you want to get more complex and have like multiple movement states where you're like going up, down and stuff. But for now, stick to this because that's a little bit tougher and that actually requires um, an extra dose of complexity that would blow your mind. So stick to just left... Uh, five frame walk cycle, get it moving mirrored in two directions and uh, leave it at that for now. Hopefully this helps you guys and uh, it also allow you to input some of your other um, other little costume changes and walk cycles in.